I have a spring here, and the Kenrick will produce a periodic wave on its left end. The wave travels down the spring, and when it reaches the right end of the spring, it gets reflected and it comes back. The reflected wave interferes with the incoming wave, and when condition is right, we get a standing wave like this. I guess it's called a standing wave because the wave does not look like it is traveling to the right or to the left. The wave looks like it's just oscillating up and down without going anywhere. We say that the spring is oscillating in loops. Right now, there are three loops. And when I say the condition is right, I mean the source frequency, the frequency of Kenrick's hand that matches the spring's natural frequencies or resonant frequencies. If you remember resonance back in the simple harmonic motion unit, you know that when there is resonance, energy in an oscillator can build up easily. For example, when there is resonance, the source does not have to move up and down very much to make the spring oscillate with at large amplitudes. But if the frequency of his hand does not match any resonant frequencies well, the spring does not oscillate in loops and energy does not build up well. So between one loop and two loops, there's not a lot of energy building up. At the lowest resonant frequency, the spring oscillates in one loop. He can increase his frequency and the next resonant frequency would give him two loops. and then three loops and four loops see if you can get five loops good job Kenrick standing waves are results of interference the interference of two identical periodic waves here we have the light blue wave traveling to the right and the red wave traveling to the left if we use the superposition principle to add the two waves together at any moment, we will get the dark blue interference result, which is the dark blue standing wave. Notice that there are five red dots that stay still at all times. Those dots are called the nodes. When we draw standing waves on a string, instead of drawing the rope at one moment, we often draw it this way to show that the string oscillates in loops. The points with no oscillation are called notes. The points oscillating with the largest amplitude are called antinodes. Since there is no vibration at a node, I can touch a node and uh, the vibration can still go up. Because one wavelength is always the wave going up, down, and then back. The length of one loop is always half a wavelength. So one loop is always half a wavelength. You shall find this very useful for standing wave problems. Now let's look at the natural or resonant frequencies in a string. Unlike a spring mass system or a simple pendulum that only has one period and therefore one frequency, a string can have an infinite number of resonant frequencies. A string can oscillate in one, two, three, or any whole number of loops. The lowest resonant frequency has one loop and it is called the fundamental frequency or first harmonic. Two loops will be the second harmonic three loops the third harmonic, four loops the fourth harmonic, etc. If we count the overtones, we only start after the fundamental frequency, so the second harmonic is the first overtone, the third harmonic is the second overtone, and then the third overtone. For the fundamental frequency, if the string's length is L, in the length L there is one loop, so L equals to the length of one loop. And the one loop is always a half a wavelength. For the second harmonic, in the length L, there are two loops. And each loop is always a half a wavelength. Since a loop is always half a wavelength, the length of a loop is always proportional to lambda because one half is always a constant. In this case, 
the length of a loop is half that of the fundamental frequency. The, so the wavelength changes by a factor of one half because the length of a loop changes by a factor of one half. And because the speed is a frequency times lambda, we can compare these three numbers. For these two, first harmonic and the second harmonic, which of these three numbers do you think is the same? The speed, frequency, or wavelength? For the first and second harmonic, the speed is the one that is the same because it's the same medium. It's the same string under the same tension, so the speed is the same. That means uh, if this one's wavelength uh, is halved, that must mean the frequency has to be doubled because 2 times 1 half equals to 1. So if wavelength is halved, the frequency must be doubled in order to keep the speed the same. That means uh, the frequency for the second harmonic must be twice the fundamental frequency. If this one has a frequency, that's what we call the fundamental frequency. For the second overtone or the third harmonic, the length of one loop, again, it is a half a wavelength, which means it's proportional to the wavelength. The length of one loop compared to the fundamental frequency is one third of that. So the length of one loop changes by a factor of one third, that means the wavelength changes by a factor of one third. Because speed equals to frequency times lambda, just like before, the speed is the same. That means if the wavelength changes by a factor of one third, the frequency must triple. So the third harmonic must have a frequency that is three times the fundamental frequency. Of course, then for the fourth harmonic, because the length of a loop is one-fourth that length of the loop, that means uh, the wavelength changes by a factor of one-fourth and the frequency must quadruple. So this fourth harmonic must be four times the fundamental frequency. And then, of course, the fifth harmonic will be five times the fundamental frequency. So the nth harmonic with n loops must have a frequency that is n times the fundamental frequency. So if a string's fundamental frequency is 100 hertz, its overtones will be 200, 300, 400, 500 hertz, etc. The nth harmonic will be n times 100 hertz.